Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. As always, I'm going to give it some time to let some people join the chat and the live stream. Um, I wanted to have a video out earlier today. Like usually I do like two or three a day. But yesterday we just got back from like a two day uh, trip or vacation, whatever, <coughs> to Adamon Diamond. And I was going to make that video and put it out today, but I guess it's going to come out tomorrow morning and I have some stuff to share about that it was a really interesting experience M. James is here with two things of like like confetti coming out of a cone what's that supposed to be like one of those things that you like pull the string and then the confetti comes out I don't know so if you're here let me know that you're here and where you're from crochet mama hey jared mackenzie kate what's happening this friday we'll talk about that in a minute once more people uh realize that i'm live streaming um so sorry i want to <coughs> i was gonna do a video earlier today but uh it's really weird like we went there and everything was fine with my allergies no problem i was taking my medications and then just for some reason on the like on the way back as we were leaving and then all the way until today I've just had like a stuffy nose so I couldn't make a video it's just, it's just like right now starting to kind of clear up the haystack Adam on Diamond today huh uh, I was gonna do a video about it today that's what I've been doing the last two days though Karen H Mesa Arizona M James Tooele Utah smiley face Crochet Mama, sorry, Southeast Missouri. Lisa Dixon from Logan, Utah. Tammy Christensen, hi from Texas. S Camp, hey from Scotland, live in USA now. Oh, you might be the first Scottish person that I know of. Um, by the way, like that's part of my ancestry. It's it's well, it's England, Wales, and Scotland. It's mostly England, and then the next biggest is Wales, and then after that, Scotland. Oscar Machuca, hello from Paraguay in South America. I know where Paraguay is. Welcome. Um, oh, wow. Getting a lot of things. I turned on subscribers only, so now we hopefully shouldn't get any of those weird uh, people that troll and spam and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to skip down a little bit because it's <laughs> there's a lot. <clears throat> Greg Brown, hi, everyone. Mansfield, Texas. B. Tusher, hello from Nebraska. Marcel hey Jared from Paulsbo, Polsbo near Seattle. Join Roy Lance, Longmont, Colorado. Melodelin. Oh wow, actually caught the beginning of a stream. Hello from cold Colorado. As in like it's cold there right now, or that's like where you live. It's a place called cold. Cause here in Texas, it, or here, oh my gosh, here in Kansas, it's not that cold. Today it was like in the 70s, and we're right next to you. But I know that there's been like those like storms and stuff out west. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Crochet Mama, my ancestry is from England, Scotland, and Wales too. We may be related. Yeah, most likely. Well, you know, go back far enough. Patty Joe Stanaway, hi from Texas. And M. Stone, hi from Calgary, Canada. Yeah, so um, I'll be putting out that video tomorrow um there was a subscriber of mine that reached out to me and uh she told me that <coughs> that she lives like right by adamande amen and invited us to come and we took her up on that offer and really glad that we did she has a really nice place and she is literally down the road from adamande amen so we were able to go and um like first we checked out uh like some of the, the like the towns around there jameson and james port and then also a little bit of gallatin kind of or drew, drove through gallatin anyway james port there's like a lot of like mennonite people but they had a lot of cute just like shops and restaurants and stuff um but anyway so that's what we did the first day and then the next day we went to hans mill and then after that to far west and then after that to adam and i got a really cool well, not really cool, but I grabbed a rock just as a memo or as a, a little thing to remember Adam on Diamond. 
but yeah, I'll do a video about that tomorrow. So anyway, I don't know, like maybe some of you have seen, you, you've been following, you know, what's going on in Jerusalem and you know that I've done some videos about uh, Ramadan and how this year there's a lot of potential for uh, chaos and escalation and stuff like that because of the war that started in October. And I've been following it pretty closely on X and just watching other YouTube channels and watching the news. And uh, that first day that they declared Ramadan uh, was going to start on Monday. So they, they declared it on Sunday because I guess that's when they sighted the, the moon, um, the new moon or whatever it is that they look for. And so the first prayers started on Sunday because I, I guess in Islam, their day starts at sundown as well, just like in Judaism, I believe. But like that's when they first started doing the like prayers was on Sunday night. And uh, on that first night, there were like nothing like huge, but there were you know, some, some scuffles with police and, uh, police like not allowing, um, certain people to go to Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Temple Mount. And so there were, I saw a few videos showing that, and I've been like really interested in it because, um, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, they're calling on Muslims everywhere to descend on Jerusalem during Ramadan. And, um, Anyway, as a result of Sunday night, it seems like that's led to a couple terrorist attacks and tensions are high. But what I've heard recently is that Friday is the, dig, the big day to, to look to. Because uh, I guess historically, uh, it's like that first Friday that tensions really uh, ratchet up. And so I don't even... What is, what's today again? <laughs> Today's Wednesday. So we have a couple days... And it seems like Friday is going to be probably like the big day to, to look for. But yeah, already there's been a couple uh, terrorist attacks. And I've seen, a lot, I, I don't know, probably like instigators on X, like trying to get things going. Uh, because there was a lot of like, oh, look, Ramadan really hasn't even started. Or it's just like the very first night. And already this is what the uh, Israelis are doing and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know if you've seen more. Uh, feel free to put it in the chat, or if you're watching this after the fact, then put it in the comments below. But uh, I feel like there's a lot of potential. I really do. I feel like right now, I've said it a million times, I'm kind of a broken record at this point, but I really feel like a lot of things are coming together right now in March and April. And uh, one of the big things was getting... Oh, Thomas Wheeler, hello from Gallatin, Missouri. So we have someone from Gallatin here. Yeah, I was there just a couple days ago. It's a nice little town. Tamara was telling us about like the, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but like basically like an election day fight that broke out you know, because the Missourians, you know, they were worried about, about us, members of the church, voting against slavery and like voting against the way that they would vote. And that led to a fight and, and all the rest of it. So Gallatin's a nice little place. Let's see. Carol Ferguson. Hi, Carol here from Florida. Doug Wheeler. Hello, all. Carl Ribeiro. Hi, hello from California. Mackenzie Kate. What's supposed to happen on Friday? Uh, I don't know if you wrote this after I already explained it or before, but that's when things are going to really ratchet up. Like that's the day when I guess the most Muslims... Uh, like the highest number of Muslims want to come to the Temple Mount to have prayers. And so um, every year there's like, I guess there's always some limitation on that by Israel. Like they try and limit how many people go um, because they don't want, they don't want there to be like riots and chaos and uh, you know, people throwing stones and fireworks and causing problems. So they've tried to like limit the numbers of people that go there. And um from what I saw today, they are limiting if you're if you're a man, uh, you have to be 40 years old or older uh, to go to the Temple Mount during Ramadan. And so that's upsetting people. Um, <clears throat> but I guess Friday is like the big day when you have like the most number of people that want to come. And if like things were going to like escalate uh, like they have in previous years, it would probably start on Friday. Because Friday, if you don't know, uh, that's essentially their... Uh, you know, like Sabbath day. I don't know. They probably, I don't think they use that word Sabbath, but it's like the equivalent of 
our Sabbath day on Sunday or the Jews on Saturday. For them, it's on Friday. So that's the thing to uh, keep an eye on is things could really go crazy uh, on Friday. Let's see. Stand as a witness. I agree. I feel like huge things are about to happen. CO2MC, <laughs> excuse me, number 26. I'm excited for conference in April, especially now that we have the Kirtland Temple back. Yeah, I mean, the big news is like we got the temple, you know, that that was the big news. But I'm still interested to see like what they're going to say in general conference about it. You know, are they going to say like anything really interesting that we don't already know or like interesting facts about about us having the temple again, temple again? I, I don't know. Catch the buzz. Hey, from Nampa, Idaho. Let's see him sung and unsung. Just had a stake conference with elder thomas of the 70 he mentioned something interesting about preparing for the second coming said he prepare now time is running out gird up your loins that's cool um <clears throat> you know i always take like things like that with a grain of salt i'm not calling you a liar it's just i don't i don't know you but i i don't i don't have any problem believing that 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 he said that because <clears throat> i've seen with my own eyes a lot of that type of talk uh, I've seen it here in my stake <coughs> when uh, Elder Hutchins said that this last conference was like a, a whoa, whoa, whoa uh, conference. Like when you look at the three talks given by the members of the first presidency, there was some ward. I think it was like a ward conference in the stake president was speaking and uh, he was talking about how he had come from a like, I guess, like a leadership meeting and they were instructed to like, you know, think about the second coming and uh, do the work within the stake within that context that the second coming is closed. So we, you know, we need to do what we need to do, <clears throat> work on people that are inactive, gather scattered Israel. And the stake president said, so yeah, we, we as a stake presidency, we talked about it and that's absolutely what we're going to do. We're going to focus on uh, the second coming. And and then I've, I've seen other things, you know, there was the thing that was on the Temples of Jesus channel, my friend Mindy, just look up Temples of Jesus channel. She shared a video from her state conference where uh, Elder Treadway of the 70, uh, he said that President Nelson said that there's only two things left before the second coming. Gather scattered Israel and then the second coming. And there were a lot of people that were like, well, you know, he that was just like a simplified thing. There's obviously more. He's not saying that every... F no, that's not... If you watch the video... Uh, there's like a part where he says, like, if you think about all the different prophecies and stuff in the scriptures, like, according to President Nelson, like, we're not waiting on that. He said something to that effect. Just go watch it. Go watch the go to Temples of Jesus channel. And she has the video on there. He was pretty clear. And I believe him. So that does not surprise me. Uh, <clears throat> I already lost the sim hymns sung and unsung. I believe you. Peterman, howdy from Arkansas. As Kent, my brother works in Cutter. Uh, I worry about the escalation during Ramadan. Glenda Wheeler, hi Jared, woo from Salt Lake City. Heart, some flower heart. Janet Manning, good evening Jared. What did I miss? You'll just have to rewind. Sorry, I can't. I can't always repeat everything. Stand as a witness. Okay, that. Inham Stone, have you heard any more about the red heifers? Do you think they are purposely keeping the date secret? It doesn't seem like they are keeping the date secret. I mean, maybe the like the actual day. I haven't heard the actual day, but I've heard two times now <clears throat> that they're going to do it during Passover. So one of those like seven days. I've heard it from two different places, like official sources, like coming directly from the people that are, are going to do it. It's uh, It seems like it, it's Passover. So and again, Passover. Let me just double check. Go to hebcal.com. Um, Passover. <coughs> excuse me. Passover is going to start at sundown on the 22nd of April. And then go until uh, sundown of the 30th of April. Right? Is that, do I have that right? Yeah. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah until the 30th. So basically that last um, couple weeks of April. 
uh, I'm telling you, once they do that and they said that they're going to live stream it, I think things are going to go to the next level as far as like escalation goes. Uh, let's see. GW Vest, this will be a historic conference. Yeah, I think so too. What what type of things do you guys anticipate for this conference? If you feel like it's going to be a big conference, what do you think? How many times do you think President Nelson will talk? Uh, do you think there will be like a lot of talk about the Kirtland Temple? Do you think there's going to be other announcements? I really feel like after getting the Kirtland Temple, like anything's possible. You know, I already felt that anyway. But like now actually having, having an example of something that felt like it was so far away from happening but having it happen all of a sudden i feel like just anything is possible mauricio nunez uh red heifer barbecue and general conference coming up <laughs> yep tina m fam he said two things left to do he wasn't talking about events no he was pretty clear he was pretty clear. He said, like I said, something to the effect that out of all the prophecies, that's what President Nelson said. I, I don't get into like the nitpicking at little words. Like it was pretty clear. Sherry Johnson, glad to be here. Nancy Wood. Hi there from Pelahatchee, Mississippi. Love Jared and his family. CO2 MC number 26. I was wondering what your thoughts are on the red heifer sacrifice during Passover. I've heard that it would be televised. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be televised. I wouldn't be surprised if they played it on some like local station. And obviously, I think the, the news would cover it. But um, they said that they're going to live stream it. Um, OM17 spot 2277. And I exhort you to remember these things for the time speedily cometh that he shall know that I lie not for ye shall see me at the bar of God and the Lord God We'll say to you, okay. Um, Justin Fennis, holy cow, finally, final on a live. Love that hat, Jay. Ooh. Thank you. This was one of the first ones that, <coughs> that I got. First, I got a gray felt one, and then I got this straw hat. GW Vest, 144 missions. Hmm. Crochet Mama, I think there will be a lot of appreciation shown to the community of Christ for taking care of the temple. T-A-F-I-A-T, -A Satan working overtime in my area. Ward members getting pretty and super offended at each other. He's trying to wreck the peace and love of God. Uh, yeah, I think that's like a really important thing to work on. You know, if we're, if we're wanting to get ready for the second coming, there's all these different things that we need to do. Gather scattered Israel on both sides of the veil. But the other part of that is becoming a Zion people and we have to avoid contention. And it's hard to do because there's some people that provoke you. There's people that lie. Uh, there's people that uh, feel entitled to do things. And so they ignore everybody else and do that thing. You know, they do things out of order or do things in an unfair way. And you are justified in being upset at that. But the trick is not letting it be contention, not losing your cool trying to be a peacemaker, trying to stabilize things rather than introduce <clears throat> chaos or, you know, add to the chaos. That's something I think about all the time. I want to do the best that I can, but it's, it's hard. It's like a lifelong pursuit to try and be a peacemaker. Zealously striving, Las Vegas, Nevada, GW Vest. Are you going to view the eclipse in the totality zone? I was talking about that with Tamara and her husband. Those were the people that we stayed with uh, when we went to Adamonde Amen. If you're just joining the chat, that we were there for the last couple of days. We stayed at um, the house of some members of the church, and they live like right down the street from Adamonde Amen. And uh, they were talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, how they caught the first eclipse in Idaho and how incredible it was. And they showed us video of them, you know, watching the eclipse. And at first I didn't really have plans to do it, but I'm kind of feeling like I want to at this point because it, it doesn't happen every day. You know, it, 
it, it's going to be a long time before something like that happens again. So I feel like maybe I should try. Let me let me know if you guys are are you going to try and uh, be in the path of totality. Let me know in the in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this after the fact. Chelsea Newman, hello from Idaho. Oh yeah, this is Chelsea. She's the one that basically uh, got the ball rolling with the flood the earth challenge. By the way, she sent me an email which ended up turning into the Flood the Earth Challenge. So good good job, Chelsea. Penny Tidwell, I feel like something new is coming at conference. I can't wait to see what it will be. Uh, Janet Manning, I feel that last conference had brought in so many warnings this conference. I don't know for sure what is going to happen. I feel it's winding up. I totally agree. <clears throat> I do. I don't think it's any small thing that uh, Think Celestial... And then his talk in April 2019 uh, called Come Follow Me, they were like parallel talks. They were like they went together. They had the same warning. He read the same scripture. In the one in April 2019, he said time was running out. And then this one, he he gave this talk just be, in the conference before this general conference. I, I just feel like there's something to that. Um, stand as a witness. I can't wait for conference. How many new temples do you think will be announced? If I were to guess, I would think like, you know, something like eight to 10. That's, that's what I would think, but who knows? Um, Kevin Kirshenman, hi from uh, Pleasant Grove, Utah, Tina Lusk. I wonder if the red cow is one of the two things the prophet was talking about. Uh, no, he was. He said the gathering of scattered Israel and then the second coming. Stand as a witness. <clears throat> uh, I can't wait for conference. How many new temples? Oh, or right, that, Justin, Jared. What do you think about missionaries being called home prior to Christ coming to the Jews? Just prior to since things happen so naturally, I've wondered about that. Ooh. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to happen or, or not. Um, I know that the gospel is going to start to go to the, the Jews in earnest, starting with Christ coming to them. For more on that, uh, I have my playlist called uh, Times of the Gentiles. And, and there's multiple people that talk about the fact that the Jews are going to begin to believe, which they have. We have some that have joined the church. On top of that, we have the Messianic Jewish movement, which is, you know, it's starting to grow. Um, but that Christ himself would essentially like usher in like this change, like a focus from the Gentiles to the Jews. But I, I feel like if I were to guess, and it is a guess, I think missionaries would just continue to operate like they do now. And then at that time, I'm sure people would be called to go serve in Israel and do proselyting there. Uh, cause I, I don't think all the Jews are going to be converted. I don't think all of them will when Christ comes, there's probably going to still be missionary work, but I, I don't, who knows? I don't know. Sasha Jorgensen, I'm definitely expecting more messages from president Nelson along the lines of his talk, his talk about, or top or talk about, about time running out and how we need to prepare as quickly as possible. Yeah. I feel like his last several talks, like these last few conferences have been like warning talks and like trying to get us like, it's like when, um, <clears throat> have you ever like at work, um, you have like, you know, one of the big wigs coming to, you know, check out your area. Um, they're coming, like, there's like a, like a district manager or like a really like a higher up, maybe the president of the company, they're coming to visit your, your, um, location and so like your manager comes and they're like okay hey clean up your desk like take the take this stuff down for now just like put it away you can put it back up later um but like you know getting ready for like an inspection or something like that so like everyone really all, all everything gets tightened down i feel like that is kind of what's been going on with president nelson with him basically telling us what i think christ would expect when he comes he wants uh peacemakers he wants uh, people that are living as a Zion people of one heart and one mind, get rid of contention. Um, 
you know, if you're not on the co covenant path, get on the covenant path. <clears throat> Remember, there's consequences. Uh, if you aren't, if you want to stay together with your family, you need to all be living a celestial lifestyle, think celestial, and get sealed in the temple and then remain worthy of being uh, of exaltation. <clears throat> so I, I just feel like there's been a lot of that. Joe signs uh, could be cool to do a meetup somewhere along the eclipse path. <laughs> that would be cool. You know, I have to look into this idea of like doing a meetup. That's something that I want to do, but I also need to like watch out for any like legal things. Like, like for example, I was thinking like, Oh, for the people that are around here, maybe we could, I could get like the steak center and um, we could have like a potluck, but I don't know if I would be like, legally liable for like if somebody like got sick like if they got food poisoning or something like that so i just i need to look into that more so i'm a little bit i'm a little bit leery about organizing stuff like that until i know more okay i'm gonna skip down <clears throat> because I'm, i need to try and keep up with this emily fisher i don't want to talk okay i don't know what talk can top president nelson's last conference or how straightforward a prophet can be to the world and the saints yeah i agree i feel like he's talking pretty clearly and uh i i don't know why more people aren't paying attention you know i i don't i don't know how other people perceive what he's saying you know people that think that it's like still a long ways away i talk to these people all the time i hear that you know i see the comments and whatever and it's just like if it's like going to happen 10 years from now, like, do you really think that he would be talking like this at some point? I'll do like another video where we review like all the things that he said. And it, when you put it all together, it's pretty astounding. When we had that, uh, area devotional for Kansas and Oklahoma, uh, and I didn't hear sister Nelson say this in, in any of the other ones, but she told us, at that point, I think President Nelson had given like 31 talks and she's like, you you guys need to go back and read all 31 of his talks. And once you do that, read them again, because he has been saying a lot. And I feel like that was like one of those moments where she's like, you guys, you're not listening or it's going over your head. Look at what he's been saying and then really think about it. Okay. Um, John Roylance, why is no one talking about the visit of Elijah to the Kirtland Temple? The Jews leave a chair empty for their Passover feast. The chair is filled and the, the church owns the place uh, the, that Elijah came to. Um, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess it depends on who you're referring to. Like, why is nobody talking about it? Um, I don't know if you saw the video that I did recently, <coughs> but I pointed to another video I had done a while ago when, um, oh, it was the, the video today, I think, about the two prophets. In that video, I pointed to the fact that uh, Elder Holland gave a talk at the BYU Jerusalem Center to like these Jewish uh, dignitaries and Israelis, where he told them that um, Elijah had come to the Kirtland Temple. So it was one of our apostles talking to the Jews of Israel telling them that Elijah had come to the Kirtland Temple. This was back in 2016. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more Elijah talk this conference. Where's mom? You know? No. Um, but on my spreadsheet, let me look at it really quick because I already forgot, but I want to say that on my phrase tracker, there was an uptick in talking about Elijah the last couple of years. Let me just double check. Timeline, phrases. Yeah, um, here, I'll put it on the, hold on, let me move it over. No, wait, 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 wait. We'll do it like this. Go like that. Go to desktop view. We'll go here, zoom in. 
so you'll see that <clears throat> in 2020 and 2021, there was an uptick for some reason talking about Elijah. And uh, <clears throat> based on what the church said um, about acquiring the Kirtland Temple, they started talks with the community of Christ in 2021. So I wonder if that's why they were talking about Elijah so much. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just because of the, you know, um, the importance of the covenant path, because if it wasn't for Elijah, nothing that we, that we do would have any, it wouldn't be officially recorded in heaven. It wouldn't have any authority. That, that was his priesthood key, the sealing authority, not just like sealing, being sealed to your family or your spouse in the temple, but everything, baptism, sacrament, like everything. So that was like a huge event. But anyway, there's that. Let's go back to this. <coughs> the greatest cause. Oh, the greatest causes here. I haven't seen you in a while, man. This is Tyler Cragen from the. Make sure to, ch to subscribe to his channel, The Greatest Cause. He says, you should come to Utah. I would love to, <laughs> but I have to. I don't know. Uh, it was kind of hard for me to go to um, up to Adam on Ayam in these last couple of days because I had to like, you know, bust my back uh, doing like doing all these videos to schedule them for Monday and Tuesday. And then the one this morning, I did a lot, a lot of that on Friday and Saturday. So I have to like do that and uh, then we have to go there. I don't know. I'll probably come to Utah at some point. We're, we're going to go visit my mom and. I'd like to go down to Vegas, too, and see my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, father-in-law. He's in Mesquite, Nevada. Mackenzie, Kate, did you see the the panel discussion about little children having visions and dreams? Uh, no, I didn't. Penny Tidwell, did the friends you stayed with at Adam on Ayaman mention if they have seen First President or uh, First Presidency visiting there? I know a family that lives near and have said they have seen him there when visiting supposedly of course um no not per se uh so who who i stayed with they, they it's funny because they moved there at the same time that we moved here we moved here uh to kansas from the phoenix area in 2020 and then just a couple months later they moved to uh jameson and uh she was talking about the fact that there have been a lot of people moving to these areas, you know, to Missouri, not just, not just the Kansas city area, but, uh, up by Adam on Diamond and how their ward <coughs> has been growing and stuff like that. So it kind of made me want to do it, but we'd probably have to wait a couple of years before we could buy a new house. I don't, we'll have to pray about it and see if that's right. But I'll tell you this, every time that I go there, whether, whether it's just Kansas City in general, because like the first time that I ever went to Kansas City, we were going to an amusement park called um, Worlds of Fun. And it's a, it's a pretty good amusement park, by the way. And it's kind of like, I can't remember if it's in Independence, but it's like really close to it in any case. But we, we just went to go to Worlds of Fun just that one day. And just like going into Kansas City the first time, I felt really good. If I liked the city itself, I, it's pretty, but I felt good there. I think it was probably the spirit, but each additional time that we've went, uh, it's felt the same. And I don't know if it's like a pull of the spirit, like prompting us to like go there. But all I can say is I feel good. I, and I, I at first I, I thought like if we did move to that area, we'd probably move to like Kansas city or somewhere outside of Kansas city to be close to like new Jerusalem, but going to far West in Hans mill in Adam on Dayam, And I, I felt the same way there as well. I feel like I'd be happy anywhere in there, maybe somewhere between Kansas city and, and Jameson, which is where Adam on Dayam is. So I don't know, put in the chat. Have you ever thought about moving to Missouri or Kansas and, do you feel like that's something that you may do? I don't think it's for everybody. There's not a call to move there. 
but individually, I think for some people, it's the right thing to do. I guess, I guess it was for us. We moved here because of house prices. I couldn't afford anything in uh, Arizona or Utah if we wanted to buy like land. <sighs> Still a little bitter about that, but I'm, I'm glad because we came to Kansas. And then after we got here, I was like, hey, we're like, you know, just like four hours away from Kansas City. And then five hours away from Adam on Almond. And... I, then I thought about the fact that on my dad's side, we have, you know, a pioneer heritage. My family goes back to um, Nauvoo and Kirtland and stuff. And I was thinking, you know what? It's kind of neat because it's kind of like, my, like it through me, it's like coming full circle. Like they all ended up going to Utah. But now, as far as I know, I don't know how many of my like extended family that I don't know has like moved to Missouri or Kansas or Nebraska or whatever. But I have, and it just kind of feels special because of that. Because, like, if everything had gone right, if the saints hadn't been driven out, that would have been the headquarters of the church. That would have been uh, Salt Lake City, or you know, headquarters of the church. That would have been Utah. Missouri would have been Utah. Um, Valerie Morgan. Hi, Jared. I'm watching from Mesquite, Nevada. Yeah, that's where my father-in-law lives. He lives in the, the Sun City development up there. Thomas Wheeler, <clears throat> we moved to Independence from, from Arizona and then moved to Gallatin 15 years later. I like that little area up there. Uh, it's very hilly and just nice and pretty and calm. And I like it. I like it a lot. Melodelin, I have no desire to move to Kansas. Perfectly happy here in Colorado. I guess some are, some of us just don't have that prompting. Yeah, it would be chaos if that happened. I don't think ever, just I don't. That's not the plan. That's the camp that I'm in, based on my research. Many, many, many prophets have said there's not going to be a gathering to New Jerusalem. There's like there's other people that have theories that like the entire church is going to go there. And I don't, I don't think so. Um, but I think that there are, there are people that are starting to kind of make, make their way there in an orderly way, in a way that doesn't require, you know, a big like church announcement and maybe enough people that the Lord would need to come and just kind of like prop up this area for the future to like kind of get it going. Cytosin. <clears throat> Um, <coughs> see me still have the cough. Uh, if I weren't married, I would 100% move now to Missouri. Him sung and unsung. Many of my extended family are planning to move to Independence, Missouri. Jordan, uh, Dependimus, I've been called to move to Bentonville, Arkansas. Well, it's nice that you have that temple right there. That nice new temple. Meldalyn, I've, I'd moved to Missouri Wait, I'd moved to Missouri before I'd moved to Kansas. Used to live in St. Louis, and I know Missouri better. Just, well, feel like I should stay here. Lynn uh, Tietjen, or Tietjen. I moved to just north of Kansas City in 2021 from Idaho. I love Idaho and had no plans to move to Missouri. Thomas Wheeler, we helped set up the chairs in Independence. Marcy, uh, folks... Uh, what about the saying that there won't be a dog left to wag its tail in Missouri? I thought I heard that quote somewhere. Uh, that has been... Okay. Missouri Myths Graham Doxy. Let me see if I can find it really quick. That's one of those things that people like to like <clears throat> keep alive it's like it's it's a myth um, i'm gonna put a link in the stream or in the uh chat this is by graham w doxy he i have to talk to Tamara again but i think he was like the first person the first person that was over adam on diamond like to oversee it um so he had a lot that he did with uh, the, the lands of Missouri. 
<coughs> and he addressed that myth. Um, basically, that was referring it was a it was a prophecy of Joseph Smith, but it referred to the Civil War. How essentially uh, that area would be devastated as a result of the Civil War. Uh, essentially, I guess, like as a punishment, it just I, I can't remember all the details. I have like a bad memory. Just there's the there's the link for it. They published this in the April 1979 ensign. The church so many times has tried to like dispel these myths, but they still persist. I just, I just and, and there's like no amount of things that they could say or that I could say that will persuade some people. Some people are they have their view of how things are going to go and that's just it. So it's kind of a waste of time sometimes to like try and set that straight. Ephraim's night and maiden. I felt pulled. I felt pulled this way for sure, but I don't feel that Missouri was right just yet. So we are about four hours South of Kansas city. Penny Tidwell haven't felt the pull to move to Kansas city, but we 100% have been told through a blessing that uh, every are where the that every are where the Lord, the Lord wants us. We we're trying to move back to Utah, and it wasn't meant to be. Smiley face. Uh, key, I've had the thought. Okay, I have had the thought, but Utah has good deaf schools for my kid. I haven't checked out the deaf schools there. My mom says she feels the need to move. C.S. Luau. Uh, checking in from South Carolina. Finally caught you live. Lynn Tietjen. I've been so surprised how many people have been showing up here with a similar story. Yeah. When I was talking to Tamara, she was she was talking about just so many people. Like every year there's more and more people moving to that area. But she also uh, talked about people that again, things are, the Lord does things in an orderly way. You know, me and my family moving to Kansas, it was because we were just naturally moved here. We could have ended up in Texas. There were properties in Texas that I liked. That's where I served in the army. We liked Texas, but we, you know, uh, widened our scope or, or, you know, the areas that we wanted to look at. We looked at Missouri. We looked at Arkansas looked at Oklahoma and we just felt good about Kansas. So, and we just, this is where we ended up and uh, I can tell that this was the right move, but there's other people that, you know, they'll, they'll, she, she said that there are people that go, that'll just like show up at Adam and Ayaman and not have a plan and don't have a way to support themselves. Like they, like they have some kind of like, I, I don't know. Uh, they get maybe too zealous or maybe there's mental illness involved or something. I don't know, but there, there'll, there'll be people that show up there and then they don't have a way to support themselves. Like they, they concoct kind of like a fantasy that all they need to do is just like show up and then everything will be okay. And that's not right. <laughs> it needs to be done in an orderly way. You have to like, make sure that you're able to survive. Um, David Burt, moved to uh, Galena, Kansas. I wonder where that, sorry, I need to look that up really quick. I'm not, I'll, I'm not going to show it on the map. I just want to, before I forget, Galena, Kansas. Where is that? Oh, that's over there by, uh, it's like Southeast uh, Kansas. We were, we put in an offer on a house in Coffeyville. That's like further west, but, but it didn't, it didn't go through. It was a really, really nice house. But <clears throat> when the, when we were having like the house inspected, they came across something that could have been, uh, as, uh, asbestos. I can't even pronounce words anymore. Like asbestos, asbestos. And so we, we backed out of it but it would have been a nice property, like 10 acres. It was a really cute farmhouse, but okay. Damon, the Kansas school for the deaf in Olathe, Kansas is one of the best in the U S Doug Wheeler. Isn't the Missouri area going to be, be wiped clean before the second coming makes me not want to move there in that case. No, it's not. 
Re read the go to the link that I put in the um in the chat. It's not going to be wiped clean. I mean, it could, but there's not a prophecy saying that. Um, this is part of this camp of people, the school of thought, the the romanticized idea that you know some tragedy is going to happen to Kansas City. Can the entire Kansas City area is going to be decimated, destroyed, and then everyone's going to come with their hand carts to New Jerusalem. That's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. From what, uh, okay, I've done videos about it. Uh, just go see my playlist called New Jerusalem or just see my channel in general. No. Uh, Sally Wardle, uh, going to tour Manti Temple next week. Oh, yeah, I saw that on the church news that the open house is like starting for the Manti Temple. Janet Manning, just as soon as I sell my house, I'll be able to move to Independence. Had dreams in Independence, Missouri. Waiting on when the right time is from my Heavenly Father. Stand as a witness. Going to bed. Good night, guys. Uh, also remember, again, do things in an orderly way and don't just like... You'll, you'll, you'll definitely want to check out Independence beforehand because it's kind of like not that good of an area um, when it comes to like crime and drugs. So, you, I mean... I don't know. You may want to look at some of the other suburbs of Kansas City, but Peter Jeffries, side note, not sure if you saw, but Jerusalem Post this morning did a post on how there was a 3.8 earthquake by the Sea of Galilee. Wondering if it's gearing up towards the big one. Yeah. Yeah, I did that, that video a while ago, a couple weeks ago, how uh, Israel's past due for like a, a big earthquake. It happens, I think, I think it said like once every 90 years or something like that. Thomas Wheeler, there were civil war battles fought in the downtown independence area. OM 17 spot 2277. Most of us are, most of us are here watching the live video because we hear the Lord calling in. We are watching and waiting. Just remember, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Patty Joe Stanaway, uh, will this temple have to be okay? Will this temple have to be rededicated to have anyone visited, like Elijah, so on and so forth, the Savior? Like the Kirtland Temple? Um, I would think so. <coughs> it seems to me that. I don't know of any stories of like anyone appearing in a in an undedicated temple, except for the case of like places like the Sacred Grove, the Mount of Transfiguration, like those kind of like natural spaces that are used as like temple spaces. But I would think it would probably have to be rededicated before something like that would happen. I know that the plan is that the Kirtland Temple has is going to remain open, has, according to the agreement, has to remain open to the public um, for 15 years. After that, I don't know. Thomas Wheeler, we had several people show up in Independence during our time there. Many had to leave because they came without a plan. Others made things work. Yeah. Guys, do not go there without a plan, please. Make sure that you can uh, support yourself. Kimberly D, lifelong Utah, but moved to Idaho three years ago. Friend said she is fascinated by the place of the Lord is placing his people in the last days. Smiley face. What are we watching Friday? Uh, we talked about that earlier in the stream, but essentially when it comes to Ramadan, I guess it's the first Friday, which is like their holy day of the week. They're, they're kind of like Sabbath day. Um, traditionally it's the friday the like the first friday of ramadan when things like really kick off like when there's like these skirmishes and stuff on the temple mount and i think it's because that's when the mo the largest number of people come to the temple mount is on that friday to do prayers so this friday could be there could be a big escalation um Crochet Mama, I have seminary in the morning. Good night, all. Good night. Um, have a good time with seminary tomorrow. 
Judy Sherwood. I really love this heart. C.S. Luau. I had some friends that left Portland, Oregon area because of all the craziness a few years ago. Ended up ended up moving to Oklahoma where they now have a farm and they love it there. That's cool. I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of like starting to adopt this lifestyle of like homesteading, farming, or just having land, you know. I mean, it's just, it's just anecdotal. Like I, I don't have any like uh, studies on that, but I, I feel like I've seen a lot of that in my personal life, people wanting to do this. And I think it's a good idea. I think it's good to have land. Okay. I'm probably going to end this in just a second here. We're coming up on an hour. I got some more stuff to do tonight. Jay Kennedy went to a wedding reception last week at the Independent Steak Center. That was that was my <coughs> sorry, that was my steak center growing up. Gave me a reason to be in there again. Um, I go to sit in the parking lot often to meditate. That's cool. What's up, Jessup? What's potentially happening on Friday? Okay, I just talked about that. David Burr, I saw a YouTube video about W jealously striving people sewing showing up without a plan is like the lds slash restoration version of uh jerusalem syndrome oh that must be a thing where like people immigrate to israel and don't have a plan yeah it's like oh there's such a there's such an issue with like Again, people in this community, this like LDS second coming community, I think there's a lot of people that are pretty well grounded. Um, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of other people that are pretty like disconnected uh, from reality. They, they live too much in like in their head fantasies, you know, um, crafting like stories about what's going to happen in the future. And uh, that's kind of dangerous because then you end up potentially doing stuff like that. Like you obsess about these wrong ideas that the entire church is going to go to New Jerusalem, that they're going to go to Jackson County, Missouri. And so you you like fantasize about it and you're like, you know what, I'll just do things now. I'll like go there now um, before things get bad uh, because they've read a bunch of books by people that promote those kind of ideas. And uh but they're like such magical thinkers that they, they think that, you know, just like the path is going to be opened up for them and they're going to be magically sustained or like the Lord's going to like provide a way, like a miraculous way for them just to show up and everything's going to be okay. And, uh, that's, that's not right. That's not how things are done. Um, there's like such big disconnects. <clears throat> that I've noticed. Um, like one big disconnect is like what the prophets actually say. Like when you take all of what living prophets have said from the beginning of, of the church until now, and you put it all together, there's really big disconnects. People coming up with these like elaborate things over here and it doesn't match up with like what the current prophet is saying or recent presidents of the church or in the case of like Adam on Diamon, I'm going to, I'm going to talk more about this in my video tomorrow morning, but <clears throat> well, put, put in the, in the chat or the comments, if you've been to Adam on Diamon, I doubt, you know, very many people in the church have gone there because, it, you know, uh, some people do like family, like church history trips. So that does happen. But I, I think probably most members of the church haven't been to Adam on Diamon, including myself until, until yesterday. And so it just kind of remains like this, like abstract idea, you know, and you don't really know what's going on there. So like, there's people that'll put out things like, Oh, you know, there, there's like a lighting system. Like there, there's like these lights and generators that they're setting up at Adam on Diamon and they're clearing trees and they're doing this and that you hear like these rumors but when you actually go there, that's not happening. 
It's not happening. You know, here we have this girl, Tamara. She's been living there since 2020, and she, she like, always goes there. Like, it, you can, like, pretty much go anywhere, it seems like. I mean, there's, there's like, places that are kind of, like, fenced off because there there's, like, places that they have for, like, pastures. Like, they rent out the land to, like, ranchers and farmers. In fact, the valley of Adamondayamin, I guess it's, like, leased out to these uh, these brothers that are farmers, and so they, they farm in the valley. But <clears throat> there are there's not like an underground facility. That's like another thing that I've heard is that there's like an underground thing there and just like all this like infrastructure. But when you when you go there, it's pretty apparent that there's not. But even, it's even better when you talk to somebody that actually lives there. So there's like another disconnect where people come up with things in their minds or they want attention. So they make something up or they twist something that's said and there's like these disconnects from reality disconnects from the prophets disconnects from like an actual situation like Adam and it it kind of, it kind of makes me a little nervous you know cuz some people get really really crazy uh you have people that are in the news like members of the church that started going off on strange paths and now they're uh in court you know they're in prison and they're in court and somehow there's people that, you know, end up believing those people. <sighs> you guys, we got to be, we got to be grounded in reality and stop with like the fantasy and the, just the never ending speculation. Like it's okay to speculate, but like you have to label it as speculation. And there's people that don't draw that line. They, they will speculate and then like preach their speculation as though it's true. Sorry, if you're joining late, you'll have to just rewind because I've already talked about Friday a couple times. So sorry, we're getting toward the end of the, the stream. Um, Taryn R, I've been, got stung by a bee there. Oh, smiley face but it was almost 20 years ago there was an amazing spirit there i just saw a field though no setups of equipment no in fact just like recently oh, what did she say i think she said it was either this year or within the last few months they they finally put up like this um i don't know if there were bathrooms there before but they have like this new uh bathroom building and she was talking about the fact that like the the walkway uh didn't have like uh like gravel uh, <clears throat> until recently. So there, there's been like a lot going on. They have done things. They like planted trees. There's like a few little areas where there's like flowers, like little flower gardens and stuff, but it, it's, I don't know. Morisel, my wife and I went there on a church tour. JG Fry 17. I plan to go to Nauvoo this summer as well. I'd love to go to Palmyra too. That'd be so cool. Yeah, it would. C.S. Luau, uh, it is good to have land, but you need to make sure you pick the right land at the right time in the right place for the right reasons. I speak from experience. Jay Kennedy, I'm 30 minutes from Independence. It's my hometown. Uh, I would not live there. It's pretty run down. And not too safe in most areas. The schools are also hurting. Uh, so yes, the notion is nice, but reality is different. Yeah. So everyone think about that. If you're wanting to move to independence, maybe consider somewhere else that's nearby. Like, uh, you know, I have a friend that lives in Lee Summit. That seems like a nice place. Or up by the, the temple. I guess uh, the Kansas City Temple is in Liberty. I believe, and that seems like a nice place. Penny Tidwell, the only time I've been to Adamondiamen was back when I used to think that we were all going to be traveling there in the last days. Oink. David Burt, you mean 15 minutes of fame, laugh out loud. Thomas Wheeler, we were there last Sunday afternoon. We might have even crossed paths. Well, I wasn't there on Sunday. I was there uh, yesterday. We, we went up, well, okay, yeah. So we went up there on Monday, and we went to Jamesport. Um, 
yeah, we, we just, we did James Port and then spent the rest of the day at her place. And then the next day we went to Hans Mill and then far. So, so yesterday Hans Mill, far West and Adam on Ayaman. I couldn't believe how, like, <clears throat> I was like starting to kind of think like that I wouldn't mind living by like far West because undoubtedly there's going to be a temple there in the future Pro probably not anytime soon most likely millennial but far west would be a great place to to live i, I like that area jay kennedy i go monthly to adam on Diamond. the only new thing is the entrance sign yeah but the bathrooms too right that's tamra said that the bathrooms were new and they seem new because when I went inside, it had like that new building smell. Um, let's see. David, Burr, I saw that sign too. Dang it. And I meant to take a picture by that sign. We were even talking about it, but just forgot. Thomas Wheeler, wonderful pies in Jamesport. Yeah, we got one of those. We went to that like bakery place and got like the little the like fruit the fruit pie things it was good we went to um the antique store in uh james port and that's where i got this uh <laughs> license plate right here kansas 447 book of mormon for gen z hey jared perhaps the big move to jackson county and or going to be as a big sacrament meeting at Adam on Amen is present in the culture because some love guilt and suffering. Okay. What? Hey Jared, perhaps the big move to Jackson County and or going to a big sacrament meeting at Adam on Amen is present in the culture because some love guilt and suffering. Huh? You'll have to expand on that. <laughs> um, I have a lot to say about Adam on Adam Adam on Ayam and tomorrow. Um, some things that I hadn't thought about before. Uh, yeah, about like about its ability to host millions of people. You know, say that like half the church went there. So you had so, like about you know about eight to nine million people somewhere around there. Uh, have different thoughts about that. I'll share that in the video tomorrow. Faithful Foundation, Jared, you are awesome at making content and have inspired me to make content of my own to help speed the message of the gospel. Awesome. Plaid, I do think that the gathering is happening in all realms of Heavenly Father's children, so there could be preparation unseen by those of us in the realm. Smiley face with an angel halo. JG Fry 17. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. David Burt, I did. Plaid, unseen by those, us in the mortal realm. Yeah. Rebecca T, actually, I live 50 or 45 minutes from Adam Adayaman. They have new bathroom on top of Spring Hill. Uh, they took out a lot of trees so that you can see the valley better. Uh, nice flower beds and new marquee. Patrick Burt, I'm planning to visit, <coughs> sorry, Adam Adayaman the third week of May as well as the Kansas City area. Looking forward to it. Uh, you, will, you will not be disappointed, I don't think. I, I was impressed by... Um, like, I, I, I didn't have a very good picture of what Adam Anayama was going to be like. I'd seen plenty of pictures, but, like, when you're actually there, it's actually much more massive than what you can tell. Like, the pictures don't do it justice. I, I, I'm going to show some pictures in the video tomorrow, but like it's big like the valley is much bigger than i thought and it's much more down like surrounded by like steep hills like steeper hills than what i thought i, I was i was pretty impressed just how like big and massive and kind of like dramatic looking it was book of mormon for gen z who would want to make a trek to jackson county and we love guilt because of our perfectionism quest yeah well
yeah i don't know i think there's just different reasons why people hang on to these like alternate theories that seem to be crafted mostly by like authors or like just different people sometimes i think people a lot of people genuinely believe those things but and I think sometimes they don't have all the, the research done. They just have like the stuff that's easy to find. And so it like paints a certain picture. But when you find it all and you put it all together, that's it, it's that's not what's gonna happen. Um other people I think that they don't care. They they want followings, you know, they want to sell books, maybe. Um they just don't some some people don't care about reality they just want to have a following they just want to craft an exciting story and that's like another big problem i feel like there's so many people in this group community that are just like looking for excitement you know treating these things like it's entertainment rather than reality and so when something that they think is exciting is actually not right like there's some prophet that's like no it's not gonna be like that they don't want to go with that because it's not exciting it's a it's a letdown it's just like such a huge problem with that i think okay this will be the last one that i'm gonna go rebecca t hans mill is really a special place uh the feel the feel a positive spirit there the church put in a new bridge to get there and it's very pleasant to and it is a very pleasant place to feel the Holy Spirit. All right, guys, thanks for all your comments and for joining me tonight. Look out for that video tomorrow. It'll probably be a little bit later in the morning, um, but I'll share some interesting things and just thoughts that I had about Adam on Yaman. And uh, yeah, all right, have a good night. I'll talk to you guys later.